Path Pilot Longish Tip. Today, we're talking about probing. All of our three axis mills have an option for a probe to set your work offsets. So today I wanna to go through a brief overview of what capabilities you have and how to use those capabilities. We're gonna cover wireless probing on the 1500, wired probing on the rest of the mills, whether it be the passive probe or the active probe. I've got a few scenarios set up on our various mills to show you how to set up your work offsets and measure features on your part. What we won't cover here is cam generated probing or in process probing. Let's get started on the 1500MX with a wireless probe. A common need for probing on a machine is to find the center of your workpiece. The workflow you might be familiar with in PathPilot is our find rectangular boss probing routine. In that routine, you line up the probe on the outside of the part and PathPilot will walk that probe all the way around the part to find X and Y zero. If you have a larger part or an irregular shaped part, that can be troublesome. So we added a new boss probing routine. So all you have to do is set the rough dimensions of your part and PathPilot will just probe a few key locations to get the center. This is especially helpful when you have irregular shaped parts where you want the probe to just touch the important surfaces to find your zero. Let's jump into that. First, let's pull the probe out of the tool changer. To find the new boss probing routine, we're gonna to go to the probe ETS tab, and then under rectangle circle, there's a mode button, and we're gonna select boss. In here, PathPilot is asking us for three key values, the height, the X, and the Y. Now, I'm gonna jog the probe tip down to about an inch off the surface, roughly kind of centered. Now, I know that my part is about seven and a half inches long, in X anyway, and about four inches wide in Y. My probe tip is about an inch off the surface, so I need to give it a little bit more than that so that the probe comes all the way down. I'm gonna add just a little bit more than what I think that probe tip is off the surface. So I'm gonna say we're at about 1.15 inches, and that's to add the inch that the probe is off the material, plus a little bit to make sure the side of the ball touches the material, not the tip of it. Now on the X and Y, PathPilot will add a little bit of an offset so that it goes a little bit further than the expected value, just in case you're not smack on center when you start your probing routine. One thing I wanna take a second to point out is all these probing routines can be used to measure or set the work offsets. If you measure, you're measuring against the current work offset, and that's changed by, in this, uh, we're in the rectangular circle tab here, and that's changed by the fine center and, do we wanna set the origin or do we wanna just display the results? Which will be handy, especially later on in this video. I'm gonna set this up for set origin. Now, let's find the center of this boss. First, it's gonna measure the left edge and then the right edge. Then it recenters and it'll check the front and then the back of the part to set zero on the center of that boss. Since this routine only probes the X and Y zero, I'll have to come back in a second and probe the top of that part for Z zero. You can do that by going to the XYZ probe tab and hitting probe Z negative set work origin. Another probing routine that gets a lot of use is the find a corner routine. You can do an outside corner or an inside corner, and you can do any of the four corners of a square boss. This is often used for setting the corner of your vise or maybe the, your workpiece. Let's go through that routine real quick. In the probing tab on the XYZ probe, the left side has outer corner and inner corner. First thing I'm gonna do is jog the machine down and get the probe tip kind of close to where I'm going. The red tool indicator here on the uh, preview gives you an idea of where it should be. So if I want to probe the outside corner of this workpiece, I'm going to jog the probe to about a half inch from the corner, tangential to the XY corner, and then I'm just going to hit find corner and set work offset. Then the machine's going to come down and check the X, and then it's going to go back and check the Y side of the part. And then if we wanted to use a different corner, we can use this change corner button and oscillate through the four options for corners. 
Similarly, we could do the same function with an inside corner for if you were going to check where your workpiece and the vise meet, for example. You can use the inside corner probing right here. In this example, we're here at the 1100MX with the wired passive probe in the spindle. This workflow with the wired probe is going to be similar for our 440, 770, and 1100 machines, but I wanted to show you how I find this work offset zero for my OP2 for this Arduino case. Ultimately, OP1 is pretty straightforward. It's held in straight jaws and the part is cut out. Now I need to hold this goofy geometry and deck off the top. However, I need to know where that zero is. So when I cut my soft jaws, I actually put a hole right smack in the middle of them in a known location. So my Z zero is the top of the jaws and my XY zero is the center of that hole. So the first thing I'm gonna do is switch to tool 99, which I forgot to mention is a sacred tool number within Pathpilot for the probe, no matter which machine you're on. So the first thing I'll do is make sure the machine knows that I have tool 99 in the spindle. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna manually jog that machine nice and gentle right inside that little hole there. Now with the probe down inside that hole, I'm gonna let the rectangular circle tab, we're gonna switch back over to pocket and hit find center. And you can also do just X or just Y. In this case, I've got a round hole, so I'm just gonna use the find center button. Same deal as before, I can set the origin or I can display the results. I'm trying to set my work offset origin, so I'm gonna hit find center. Pathpilot's gonna dink around and find the center of that hole. Now that I have my X, Y zero set, now I just need to probe the Z, which is the, in this part, the surface of that fixed jaw by using the probe Z button. Now I'm ready to make some parts. Just to keep things spicy, I'm gonna throw a wrench in the middle of this. Let's talk about fourth axis probing for a second. Ultimately, you have two options. In this example, I've got a big old piece of stainless steel chucked into the micro arc, and there's two ways that I can probe it. I can probe a point and rotate that workpiece while I'm probing that same point to make sure I'm measuring the true center of axis rotation, or I can keep the workpiece stationary and probe around the part to get the center of the stock. And I'll show you both of those. First, we'll get the true axis rotation. So I'm gonna make sure that Pathpilot knows tool 99 is in the spindle. And then on the probing section, under rectangular circle, we're gonna do the fine fourth axis center over here. And I'm gonna choose axis center as my option in the radio buttons. And then I'm gonna jog the probe over to about the center front of the workpiece. Up along the X axis doesn't matter as much. That probably has more to do with your run out of your piece in the chuck. I've got my probe tip about a half inch away from the stock and I'm gonna hit find A axis center. At this point, the probe's gonna bonk the part and then they're, and it's gonna bonk a few times to figure out what the arc of that round bar is. And once it figures out about the diameter it's after, then it's gonna probe around the part and move the piece with it to make sure that it gets the true axis center of rotation. But let's take a look at, show you what happens when I check the box for stock center instead of axis center. So I'm gonna select stock center here and do the exact same function again. And this time, again, it's gonna probe a few times to catch the arc of that round. And then it's gonna walk around and check the back and top and front of the piece while keeping the piece stationary. This can be helpful if you have an odd shaped part 
or something oblong or square, or for some reason you don't want the part to move around on you, that's a good time to use this function. At this point, PathPilot set that work offset for Z and Y zero to the center of that billet of material. You would still have to worry about X at this point. We're not gonna go into that. In this example, we've got a piece of round stock held up ways in a V block in the vise, and we're gonna mill something into the top of it. But we need to find the center of that material. So first, with tool 99 in the spindle, I'm gonna manually jog the machine so the probe tips uh, about a half inch or so to the left of the workpiece, roughly center with the tip below the top of the workpiece. And then under rectangular, rectangle and circle, I'm going to use the find circular boss center and find X, Y center. And this is going to do much the same as it does with the fourth axis when the round is on its side. And it's going to first probe to do a fine measurement to get the radius of that stock. And then once it knows how big around it is, it's gonna walk all the way around that part and check the X and Y distances for zero value. This routine only covers X and Y zero, so now you need to set Z appropriate for this workpiece. Now I have a one, two, three block chucked into my vise just to show you some of the functionality that isn't covered by some of those built-in subroutines. Most importantly, you can measure with it and also set your zero from a myriad of locations. So the first thing I'm gonna do is jog this machine down. Let's do the bottom right corner, just for fun, of that one, two, three block. Now, if we wanna find where the hole is, any one of these holes in relation to that x, y, zero, I can use the pocket center, except I'm gonna display the results. And let's say I just wanna find where it is and why. I can use the find y center of that same feature. And granted, since it's round, it doesn't matter where we are in x for that center, because provided it's round, the center of that hole will be the same no matter where on x you measure. The last thing I want to cover today is some of the generally single axis work offset setting and measuring capabilities of the programming routines. So I've just got a one, two, three block in here just to show you a couple of the options. And this will extrapolate further for the rest of the screen here. We've done the Z axis set work origin here. Now I want to cover some of the X and Y. We can do the exact same thing. Let's say that the edge of this block is our X, but not the corner where we would use that corner feature. So I'm just going to jog down a little bit and say probe X plus set work origin. So now the probe is going to touch and set that as our zero point. Similarly, I could do Y or X minus kind of from wherever I want using the appropriate function here. The cool part also is that I can measure. So on this center section here, the left buttons are gonna set the work origin and the right is gonna check against the current work offset. So right now I'm in G54. And so if I probe, let's see, Y positive, then I'm measuring against my work offset, which is zero, because I just set it that way. Just another arrow in the quiver here. I just wanted to give you a quick tutorial on this. Ultimately, this video is intended as an overview of probing capabilities on our mills. We didn't cover a few things, including tool setting, which will be covered on a different video. However, if you have any questions about our probing, feel free to reach out to our pre-sales department, presales at tormach.com, or check out our user forums, forums.tormach.com. In the meantime, good luck and have a good day.